pen business was extremely competitive uh, in the late 19 teens and very early 1920s. And it seemed like no one had a way to set themselves apart. It was a, it was a sea of black pens. One salesman in particular, uh, by the name of Lewis Tevel, who operated in Washington State, had an idea of a way to set Parker apart from this sea of competitors. And so he had some special dual folds made up to his specification and combined this unique red color uh, with black details. Well, George wasn't in Janesville at the time. He was on one of his many trips to the Far East. Uh, and frankly, Tevel probably found a more receptive ear uh, in, in George's two sons, Russell and Kenneth, who managed the business in George's absence. They were younger, uh, not quite as uh, afraid of risk as George had become. Uh, and so they were willing to explore the idea. They had uh, some pens made uh, that followed Tebel's basic idea and then initiated a market test in Chicago, which they did themselves. My grandfather Kenneth told me about his trip to Chicago to sell these unusual duofolds. He also told me that customers loved these new duofolds and were very anxious to buy them. In fact, all of the samples that were created for this market test were sold during that brief market test in Chicago. Kenneth and Russell now had a dilemma on their hands. Uh, they had tested successfully this unusual duofold but in a way, they'd also let their competitors know what was going on. And that concerned them because they didn't want to lose the advantage they had um, in bringing this pen to market. And so they had to figure out, okay, do we do this on our own without telling George? Or do we risk the possibility that a competitor could join us by waiting for George to return from the middle, from the Far East? And given the fact that George had been quite accustomed to being in charge of the business, he was not happy that a decision of this magnitude had been made without him. He was actually quite angry. That is, until he saw the results of the test market. At which point in time, he was less angry, but still puzzled, because there'd never been a pen like this red and black dual fold before. And it was it was completely out of George's comfort zone. It was a pen so different than any he'd ever seen that he couldn't imagine people would like it. In uh, 1932, near London, Parker used their European airplane for a rather dramatic test of the dual fold. They arranged to have a pilot and a passenger fly above the Brooklyn's racetrack near London and then drop dual folds out of the airplane onto the hard surface below. If everything went well, the pens would not break and they'd have a wonderful story to tell. Well, true to form, the permanent dual folds 
were dropped from the airplane onto the concrete surface below and not a single one of them broke. The 1920s were a very unique time in the world. In the US at least, this was the time known as the Roaring Twenties. This was a time of uh, flamboyance. This was a time of wild times. And the duofold, this unusual red and black duofold, fit perfectly into the time. And I think that had a lot to do with why it became so very popular. 